I feel so dumb yet again. Do you remember last week when I made this quilted petticoat? If you don't, or if you haven't seen the video yet, click here. I'll put like a box saying, watch that video first because that's gonna show you how I made this quilted petticoat, which is adorable and warm and turned out way better than I ever imagined it would. I have a few scraps left over from the bed sheet that I used to make that quilted petticoat out of and a little bit of quilt batting left. So my thought is let's make a matching little vest and go from there, see what happens. Maybe we'll get some mittens and a head thingy out of it, maybe not. I don't really know because I don't have a ton of fabric left, but I definitely have enough for a little vest. So that's the plan. I don't wanna keep you waiting. In this house we craft in pajamas, let's get to it. My plan is to do a loose interpretation of these two costumes, mixing together some of the like Scandinavian designs of this outfit, but then with the quilted petticoat inspired by this outfit that I kind of already made in the previous video. But then I'm gonna add a ton of snowflake details because it's Elsa and she's a snowflake lady. Anyways. For the vest, I'm using a corset pattern that I bought from another cosplayer called Lunith. She's a French cosplayer with a pattern shop and I've been really wanting to test out this pattern for a while now. I linked her Instagram and pattern shop in the notes below if you want to try it out as well. I highly recommend it. She's awesome and has a ton of really cool stuff. Do you ever find yourself doing kind of dumb things and then when you look back at it, you're like, wait a second, why did I do it that way? Well, that's kind of how cutting this pattern went. I really should have just laid them all out together and then taped all the pages together and then started cutting the pattern out uh, because instead what I did is I cut out a few pieces and then realized that I should have just, you know, taped them all together in the, initially and then I had to puzzle piece all of them back together with the cutouts and some without the cutouts and then I just kind of worked it. Cut I made it more difficult for myself, that's what I'm saying. Don't do it this way, just follow the instructions. My fabric selection for today is a very luxurious polyester pillowcase. I have two of them. I've ironed out all of the wrinkles because they were real wrinkly and then just laid the pattern pieces down according to the instructions and started cutting them out. And what what is this colorful tie-dye mess of a fabric underneath? Well, in my attempt to really just use scrap fabric for this project, I made the not so wise decision to use this tie-dye bed sheet as my structural layer. Not my best decision ever, but I was determined to make it work. I got all the pieces cut out and started pinning them together. Just to keep this whole thing organized, I have two layers of the blue polyester nightmare fabric and one layer of the tie-dye abomination fabric. And I want the tie-dye abomination fabric to go in between the nightmare polyester fabrics, but we're getting to that point. Oh, we are, we are getting to that point because this was not a smooth sailing project. Uh, I messed up so many times and had to backtrack and unpin and unpick and it was a nightmare but we did make it work. That's the theme, right? Make it work. Also, friends, iron your fabric. Iron your seams, iron your seams, iron your seams. It will make your work turn out so much better. Even if it's just a stinking pile crap, it's gonna be better if it's at least ironed. Moving on, next up we are layering up the vest. I did the two blue layers right sides together and then the tie-dye structure layer on top of that. And then I pinned everything very carefully together. If you don't have your layers organized while you're in this process, when you sew them together, and flip them inside out, you're going to end up with a mess. That's not to say that I have never made a mistake because here we go. I am cutting off pieces of bias tape because I'm gonna fold them and then sew them into the vest so that I can tie the vest up using these ties instead of punching grommets. But do you see what I'm doing? I'm like pinning all of these little thingies back into the vest because at first I had them the wrong way and now I'm like, here we go, everything's fine. I got it all layered up, I got everything like, you know, organized and measured more or less and all these pins are in a row. Everything's going so well, except for that it's not going well. And I don't even realize this yet, but I'm doing something that is like, going to cost me about two hours of time and about five years off my life in stress. So I've already made a giant mistake on this and I'm just blindly sewing, having the time of my life, watching Drag Race, kind of looking at what I'm doing, but not really focusing. And um, are you wondering what the mistake is? Because it's pretty obvious to me now, but I had no idea when I was making it. I don't know why I did this, but I, I sewed this 
so that the little loopies are sandwiched not in between the right fabrics. No, they're not in between the two blue fabrics. They're in between the greenish tie-dye stuff, which is supposed to just be a structural lining, and the blue fabrics. Like, why? <laughs> what was I thinking? I wasn't thinking, honestly. I was watching Drag Race. So now I'm just like, can I save this? Like, do I... Let's just see what it looks like, because maybe it's not too bad. Maybe it's not the disaster I think it is. Oh, oh. Oh, it's a little bit of a disaster. Okay, okay. Going with it. My hand's like a Pringle can. I did. Okay. This is the second time I've done this kind of a thing recently. Do I really want to unpick all of that? I have to. Oh. Oh, I have to. I have to. I have to. Oh, that sucks because this looks so good. It looks so good, but if I do this, then I still have seams. This was a nightmare. This is a nightmare! <laughs> oh, sometimes, sometimes you make a little mistake and it's like, oh, not that big of a deal. I'll fix it real quick. And then sometimes you have to spend the next two hours unpicking everything that you've been working towards just because you flipped things the wrong way or sandwiched it incorrectly. So here I am unpicking everything and here I am fixing my mistake because we believe in what? doing it right the first time, and if you can't do that, then try again and hope for the best. Slap that on a bumper sticker and drive away. I will admit, this is an easy fix, but it is not a quick one. This takes time to do. Sewing. Do you have the time? I feel so dumb, yet again. Um, the second time around, these loops, they worked just fine, but I totally forgot that I put loops in the little shoulder straps as well. So now I gotta flip it inside out, unpick those, reinstall those, sew it again, and then flip it right side back and I'll be in the exact same position I am right now. It'll just be an hour later. It's the fact that I did this not once, but twice in the same project that gets me. Like, why didn't I just pay attention the first time? Well, I can't account for everything that I do, turns out but I can fix my mistakes. And now I'm really moving on. I pinned the shoulder straps to the correct location on the back of the vest and carefully sewed them down. The theme for the rest of this project is check, then double check, and then proceed with caution. But luckily we are out of the woods and can move on to more decorative things. So I top stitched all the way around the perimeter of the vest and then sewed and top stitched the stomacher. This is the little piece of fabric that goes over your stomach to make the vest look like one cohesive garment. Sometimes this piece is referred to as a modesty panel, and in my opinion, it's an optional part of the pattern, but I decided to go ahead and use it since I'm still experimenting with this pattern. Sometimes what I like to do with panels like this is just add in little channels for the vest's lacings to go through, just so that everything stays in place. It's the small details, you know, the little ones. Anyways, now it's time to make a buttload of bias tape. I really should have just planned ahead and made like a mile of bias tape when I started this project, like we're talking back with the petticoat, but instead I decided to, to work with small little chunks instead. I sewed some of the bias tape onto the shoulder straps and the rest I used for the vest's lacings. Do you see what I mean when I was talking about sewing channels into the stomacher? This way I can lace the bias tape in the vest loops and in the modesty panel loops to keep everything together. Now we're finally on to my favorite part of the whole process, which is just designing and creating what's gonna go on the vest for like a pattern. I asked my Instagram followers to help me add some snowflake inspired designs to the vest and so many of you came up with tons of great ideas. My friend Hannah sent me a design with diamonds on the hem, and just looking at it, I knew I wanted to recreate something similar. So I used my best measuring skills to draw and cut a diamond shape, and then I traced the shape onto the hem of the vest with a fabric marker. Then I swapped out my sewing presser foot for my free motion sewing foot and used white top stitching thread to follow the design and make the diamonds. I definitely still think that squiggly, flowy, organic designs work best for free motion sewing, but with some practice, like a lot of practice, I kind of figured out how to do the geometric shapes and they don't look too bad. This is my new sewing embroidery machine and I've actually had it for a couple of weeks. It's just been sitting in the box in my entryway. I haven't opened it yet or used it because I've just been too lazy to cut the plastic off of it. But I'm thinking that like a cute decorative stitch around the top part of the vest would look really cute. And so the prospects that this bad boy might have like a snowflake looking stitch has motivated me to get it out and see what it's all about. So just gonna 
Just gonna explore for a second. I think I might've found a match. This bad boy right here could be flowers, could be snowflakes. I was so prepared to test out the potential snowflake stitch, but what I was not prepared for was the extremely slow moving speed of this stitch. Like this machine is not in a hurry. It is leisurely living its best lackadaisical life. It took me two hours to do this stitch all the way around the perimeter of the vest. I mean, this is just the sample right here. This was just me testing it out on a scrap piece of fabric. Look how slow it is. I have walked behind elderly patrons of the grocery store that moved faster than this stitch. And that is no shade on senior citizens. We love you, but it is shade on this machine. Here it is sped up. I don't even know how much faster this is sped up, like, I don't know, 10 times faster, and it's still so freaking slow. I mean, obviously there is value in going slow and steady, but sometimes I just want to rip through things and just be done with it and get it over with, you know? And you know, it's funny to me now, I'm watching this back, I'm editing this video, and I'm seeing me being so fed up with the speed of this machine. Um, I don't know if you noticed in the top, like, oh, you know, I'll just zoom in. This little slider controls the speed of the stitches and I have it on the slowest setting. So even though I'm absolutely mashing the pedal into the ground, I'm flooring this machine. It's still moving at an abysmal pace. But I didn't know that if I just slid this little slider over to the right, it would speed up considerably. I know that now, I learned that because of TikTok. All right, this is the vest. I think I'm done with it. I don't feel like adding more to it just because I want to move on. Plus, sometimes I add too much and it just doesn't look edited, you know? So I think this is what I'm going with for the vest. Now, I have two pillowcases left. See that? And I'm gonna try and quilt these and make like a little, a little like warm winter cap and maybe some mittens. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, wow, I have a lot of quilting to do because just doing this is going to take some time. So I'm just going to get started and uh, hopefully finish today. By now, you know the drill. Cut open the pillowcase, iron the demons out of it on a low heat setting, of course, because polyester will shrivel and burn. Layer up your materials like a sandwich where the bread is a nightmare blue polyester and the inside part is the really old quilt batting you got from your grandma's basement. Collect and use a ton of safety pins to securely pin all the layers flat and together. Then turn your brain power down to about 3% while you almost mindlessly sew many, many, many parallel rows onto your material sandwich. And when you have lots and lots of rows, so in between those rows a few times to really quilt down the puffiness to your liking. Or in this case, to my liking, because I'm the one driving this craft bus. And I know these lines could be straighter, but I'm really not concerned about it. And after I made a ton of quilting lines going all in one direction, it was time to do just as many quilting lines in the other direction to make a bunch of little quilted diamonds. I used to work at an elementary school and one of the students' names was Diamond, but he had a speech impediment and when he told me his name was Diamond, I thought he said his name was Dammit. And I was like, we need to have a talk with your parents. Look at this. I am so in love with this. Like, I realize the lines aren't as straight as they could be. I realize it's like, you know, not the best quilting in the entire world, but I feel like I've come so far. The fact that I can just, this, yeah, I'm, I love this. This is great. I just want to look at it, you know? I just want to look at it, but we have to cut it up. We have to cut it up. So. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a mock-up before I cut into this, just because I just don't wanna waste this. This took like three hours, so yeah. My plan is to do one of those little Scandinavian milkmaid looking hat cap head covering things. So I took a few important arbitrary measurements and grabbed, yes, you guessed it, another bed sheet to test out if my idea for the pattern would work. The pattern, if you can even call it that, is literally just a long rectangle that I pinned to a kind of U-shaped piece of fabric and I hoped for the best. Uh, I didn't really feel like putting that much work into this because I'm literally at the end of my rope with this project. I just wanted it to work out the first time and that be it. It's giving Handmaid's Tale Pilgrim? Uh, 
Yeah, no, this is this is the shape I was thinking it would be. I might need to make it a little bit bigger because I'm gonna wear it over a wig, but like, it's not bad. I mean, I didn't even pattern it out. I mean, look at it. It's a little bonnet. It's not as cute on video. Like I can see myself right now. It's not as cute on video, but it's adorable looking at it in real life. Okay. No, back to work, back to- I rolled out the blue quilted carpet and chopped up my hard work into the corresponding bonnet shapes. I found the middle of each piece and started pinning it together. Just from seeing it pinned together, I knew this was gonna be heckin' cute. I felt like the quilted texture of the hat would correlate perfectly with the quilted texture of the petticoat, and that the non-quilted vest would give some good variation in technique. I bound all the raw edges in bias tape. That includes the outside perimeter of the hat and the inside part where I stitched both pieces together. Luckily, by this point, I had figured out how to make the decorative stitches on my new machine go faster, so I stitched little snowflakes flakes onto the hat as well, and just look at how cute and dainty they are! Then, I had just enough quilted material left to make a set of mittens, so I traced around my hand and cut out four mitten shapes. I made sure to add a decent amount of seam allowance so that the wrist of the mitten wasn't too small. And before you go getting any crazy ideas, I know these all look like oven mittens, but do not make your own oven mittens at home unless you have the special fire retardant heat resistant fabric because if you use these as oven mitts, you're gonna burn your hand and you're gonna burn a hole straight through your little mitten. So consider yourself warned about that. And honestly, if you need oven mitts, just go buy some, don't make them at home. Well, the problem is it kept falling off though, you know? Yeah. Like I should have pinned it down or something because yeah. the amount of times I picked it up off of the ground or couldn't find it because it was like blending in with my skirts. This was a major success. My photographer. Just gonna go take some pictures. Wow, look at that. I can't believe how well this worked. Like the, little, the vest, this was cute. Albeit these strings are way too long and they don't slide. They don't slide through the loops as well as they would slide through like metal grommets. So next time I make this pattern, I'm gonna do metal grommets and probably add a more structural layer than just bed sheets. That was the whole point of this project was just to use bed sheets. So I feel good about that. And this little hat, it's so cute. The first time I put it on and actually wore it outside, it, the wind blew it right off and then it fell into a puddle. But because it's 100% polyester, it's machine washable, so that's fine. And where's the other glove? These little gloves. Well, I guess they're like mittens. Honestly, they look like oven mitts more than snow mittens. If you need someone to pull something out of a hot oven, just let me know. Although these would literally melt if I did that. So do not make your own oven mitts. It's a bad idea, just buy them. Just as a side note, the chemise I wore underneath the whole costume is one that I made a long time ago. And it is also made out of a bed sheet. I've had this for a couple of years and it's got some nasty underarm stains from when I wore it to a Renaissance fair and sweat in it all day. So when I was ironing it to prepare for the photo shoot, I could smell something and I was like, oh, I know exactly what that is. That is seventh grade locker room and it's disgusting, but I still wore it. And now I'm going to go wash it because it's really, really gross. One thing that I really liked about this project though is the tiny little stitches 
on the seams. My new sewing machine has all of these really awesome stitches. There's, it has like little snowflake designs on it and so I just like fully utilized that and they look so dainty and adorable. And I think that that little touch and this, the color contrast absolutely sold this costume. It's like, it's bed sheets. It's made out of bed sheets and like cast off material. But the added texture from the quilting and then the little details like the stitching absolutely sell this because it doesn't look like it's made out of bed sheets until you take it off and you see it in a pile and you're like, what are all those bed sheets doing over there? But like on, it's so cute and it's nice and it's kind of durable and it's machine washable. So if it ever gets dirty, I'm just gonna toss it in the washing machine and it'll come clean. The wig, this was an afterthought, unfortunately, but I will be styling this wig for the actual Elsa cosplay that's coming up very, very soon. So look forward to that. I'm nervous because I, wig styling is not my forte. Got a lot to think about there. But overall, 10 out of 10 would make again. If you enjoyed this content, please feel free to like and subscribe. More videos are on their way soon. And in this house, we craft in pajamas. Is it going? Yep. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs>